Hi, I'm Mark King, Investment Editor at Columbia Threadneedle Investments. Joining me today is Mark Burgess, Chief Investment Officer EMEA and Global Head of Equities, and we're going to discuss some of the key themes driving markets. These include the ongoing depreciation of sterling, volatility in the bond markets, and rising opposition to quantitative easing. So Mark, sterling has continued to fall. What does this mean for markets and investors? I think it means two things. Uh, I think it means that the quantitative easing programme that uh, the Bank of England uh, Governor Mark Carney put in place is having its effect. Um, it was deliberately designed to get bond yields down and to get the currency down to provide a stimulus to the economy. But I also think it means that uh, some international investors are becoming a bit concerned about the prospect for UK assets. We've got a large current account deficit which needs to be funded and that we feel a bit less secure outside of the Eurozone. So I think, uh, I think it's both of those things playing, playing at the same time. We've seen the UK equity market continue to make near-time highs. Is this just the currency impact? Well, there has been a, a very significant um, re-rating of the UK stock market, but that's, this has been driven by a relative uh, outperformance of UK earnings, as we know only too well. Uh, the UK stock market isn't the UK economy, it, it's about 70% derived from overseas earnings and there is a direct translational effect of the fall in the currency in terms of what it means for the large international companies that listed on the UK stock market. So what does this mean for our investment strategy and how are we reacting to those currency movements? So we've seen equities go up, we've seen sterling fall, which has boosted the value of our overseas investments, and we've seen bond yields fall. Um, we've also seen credit perform well, uh, stimulated by the uh, QE program. And I think this means that as risk assets have continued to do well and bond yields have continued to fall, I think it makes us reappraise our risk appetite and maybe take a bit of risk off the table as markets hit all-time all or near-time highs against a macroeconomic backdrop that doesn't appear to be getting that much better. We've also seen lots of volatility in the bond market. What's exactly driving this and, and what are we doing? Well, immediately post-Brexit, 10-year gilts went from 160 in terms of their yield and, and hit at the low about 55 basis points. And they're now back above 1%. And I think this is a function of uh, you know, a flight to safety, first of all, and a function of the quantitative easing program, but also maybe a reassessment of the risk that international investors have taken on board. So though bond yields have fallen, i.e. gilt prices have gone up, um, the currency has more than offset that in terms of what an international investor might have lost. So I think it's made international investors reappraise their appetite for, for sterling assets. Do we think markets have been appropriately sanguine about Brexit? Well, I think, you know, both bonds and equities have performed better than many people might have expected. We've already discussed the currency benefit that the UK stock market's seen, and that has been a real boost. In addition, if you export um, from the UK economy, then you've had a relative boost to your competitiveness. And then thirdly, you know, the sort of inbound traffic of tourism, uh, there's anecdotal evidence that tourism's picked up and that the, those tourists are buying more things when they're here. So that's all good. Um, but you could argue at the moment we've got the best of both worlds. We've got a devalued currency, but we've still got benefits of access to the single market. That's going to go. And so you'd have to say that um, the, the prospects for the UK economy probably start to deteriorate from here. Political opposition to QE appears to be rising. Why do we think this is? Uh, it's a bit of a double-edged sword. Clearly, uh, quantitative easing gets bond yields down, it gets interest rates down, and it gets the currency down, and all of that is good for risk appetite. But that has the, uh, has the effect of, uh, um, of increasing the pension fund deficits where the liabilities are marked to long-term bond yields. So for every benefit that you get in terms of you know, lower, lower, lower interest rates, you also get an offsetting uh, issue with regards to company profits falling because they have to make up those pension fund deficits. And, and the consensus is that you're starting to see uh, the cure being uh, as damaging to the economy as, as the illness. So I can understand why that QE opposition is starting to rise. Thank you, Mark. Thank you.